Well, all good things must come to an end. This will be the last geometric tolerance that we will be looking at. And it was specifically defined to control surfaces of revolution, which by definition contain some type of symmetry. So we've got an axis of symmetry about which that surface revolves. And as you note here, we're not saying that the uh, radius is the same throughout the feature, but uh, it does have some symmetry. So we'll look at part features that have this surface of revolution about an axis and use runout tolerance to control the deviation of that surface. And really we're doing something similar to profile tolerance in that we are relating the surface to other part features. Whenever we are doing this, you should always think of datums and what would be an appropriate datum in this context. A runout was uh, defined to deal with axial features. And by axial, it implies an axis of revolution. It will control both shape, orientation, and position, which again sounds quite similar to the profile tolerance. And we will have a relationship between features, again implying that a datum reference will be required. Also note that any feature size are regardless of feature size and therefore you cannot use material condition where you are using runout tolerances. Two types of tolerance zones. One is a two-dimensional which is indicated by the single vector and the other is two, is two vectors which is three-dimensional called total runout. And so you'll see some similarities between this and the uh, line profile versus the surface profile. So let's look at the 2D case first, the circular runout. Again, we're dealing with a surface of revolution. So in the example here, we've got an axis about which that 2D surface revolves, or that 2D cross-section revolves. We have to have a datum axis in order to relate it to uh, other features. And the datum feature related to that axis should be large enough so that this axis can be easily established. Now, what is the shape of the tolerance zone? Well, if you look at it from a 2D perspective, what we're going to do is create a 2D annulus along this axis oriented with respect to that axis. And therefore, the surface must lie between two concentric rings that change their diameter as we move down the axis. Note the relationship to other features. The primary datum, which would represent a flat surface, we could establish that by, again, a surface plate-like structure here. And then <coughs> datum C, Datum C corresponding to the axis of that uh, cylindrical feature. How do we know that C corresponds to the axis? Well, we can see it's attached to the dimension line uh, for that feature. And now we're going to construct our axis corresponding to C right here. So we'll construct C. Again, it has to be perpendicular to B. So B plays the primary role in establishing the orientation, and C is going to be used to locate our uh, runout tolerance, or I should say orient that runout tolerance as we move down the uh, surface of revolution. So what we'll do when we actually create this surface indicated by the uh, blue uh, deviations along that surface, and we're only looking at uh, this region here, what we're doing with the 2D is trying to control the cross sections. So the 2D cross sections will be oriented normal to the axis, and we're going to sort of combine not exactly, but uh, we're trying to make sure that we have concentricity and circularity. The key difference is that we're going to control 
form, orientation, and location because our 2D tolerance zone is going to be centered on our datum C. So don't forget this is C and we're going to locate our 2D annulus and orient it perpendicular to C. And then we'll check whether that surface falls within the width of the tolerance zone. Note that MMC or LMC is not allowed. Well, you can sort of think of it as a, uh, this is an example of a needle gauge from Sterrett. And here we're going to take our tip of the gauge and <clears throat> move that against the surface of revolution. And then if we, so if this is a surface of revolution, about an axis, if we were to rotate our part, and watch the needle gauge, we would see it move positive and negative, indicating that the surface is varying within some range. And then if we note the maximum and minimum, then that would tell us something about our deviations. And the question is, is that width of that interval smaller than our tolerance zone? So it does correspond to a physical way of looking at the deviations on the surface. So if we look at the uh, runout tolerance, now we're looking down the axis here, looking down uh, towards C. Uh, then we see this 2D annulus that corresponds to our tolerance zone. <clears throat> and the width of the tolerance zone, of course, similar to circularity, corresponds to the uh, static size of the tolerance in the second box. So what we're saying here is all the points on the surface, if you think back to that needle gauge, uh, for one specific cross-section normal to the datum res reference frame must lie within the annulus, again a width t. Note that the cross-sections are independent of each other. For instance, if my part is conical in shape, then each cross-section that we form a 2D annulus will obviously be different than the previous one. So they're considered to be independent and therefore not related to each other. Total runout is an extension to three dimensions where you can think of that 2D annulus running down the length of the axis and as it follows the shape of the surface, the geometry changes. So the shape of the tolerance zone is uh, similar to a profile tolerance in that it will be based on the actual shape of the feature. For instance, for the cone, right, it would be conical in shape. Here for this example, we see that it's going to track with the surface that we're trying to control. So again, we have a surface, and this is the surface. Again, C corresponds to the axis uh, running down the uh, center of our axial feature here. We have our datum axis and we establish our 3D tolerance zone. And now instead of having independent cross sections, the entire surface of interest here must lie within our tolerance zone. So we have a 3D surface of revolution representing our tolerance zone and its position relative to our datum axis, which was established perpendicular to B. And now our entire surface must lie within there. So it's a tighter constraint, obviously, than the uh, surface of revolution for the uh, circular runout. <clears throat> Again, we're looking at the entire surface. If we have a part looking like this with the uh, blue deviation curve here, we're really combining, uh, you can think of it as concentricity and profile tolerance together. And we'll also look at the deviation in form. We'll control that as well as orientation and location. Note our symbol here representing the fact that we're doing total right now. And of course, establishing our datum reference frames as we've done before. 
So here's our total runout tolerance zone, as you can see here in this uh, side view. We're going to have our tolerance zone here around the entire surface of revolution. It's separated by a width of 0 0.01, and it's centered on C and perpendicular to B. Again, a tighter constraint uh, than what we saw with the cir circular runout, which was just two dimensions. So you should understand when you have a part feature that has an axis of revolution. Uh, by that we mean we have an axial uh, feature of some kind. And a circular runout tolerance indicated by the single vector being 2D. Total runout indicated by the two vectors joined together, indicating you have a 3D tolerance zone. You're looking at the entire surface instead of cross sections. So in summary, total runout will depend upon the profile that we have for the axial feature. The datum is necessary, again, because you're defining a relationship uh, between that tolerance zone for the feature and some other features on the part. We're simultaneously controlling shape, orientation, and position. And don't forget, material condition cannot be used.